Welcome to the final episode of Hydro Wars 2025. It's been a lot of fun. I've been comparing three different hydroponics methods and seeing which one I prefer. Now, the answer may be quite surprising to you or maybe not, depending on how long you've been following me. And uh, we're gonna talk through some of the pros and cons and a few things I learned along the way about these three different methods. As a reminder, the three different methods are ebb and flood, we've got NFT, and we've got DWC. So let's get started. We'll start off with NFT. Now you may notice my NFT system is suspiciously absent of any plants. Well, there's a reason for that. This system works incredibly well for the right type of plant. Now, I didn't grow chilies in this this year. Um, I may give it a go at some point, but I really don't see the point because even with growing what I was growing in here, I had the challenges that I thought I'd get with chilies. I grew leafy veg, so lettuce, spinach, that sort of thing. The one thing that I will be doing next year is reducing the number of channels I have. I don't need as many as I have here. Honestly, once the system got going, once the plants started growing, yeah, I just could not keep up. Now, the challenge that I foresaw me having if I grew chilies in this is, with them being a longer season plant, they would still be in here and still be growing, the root system I believed would just clog up these draining channels and it would, yeah, it would either clog it up or I wouldn't be able to get the root system out of here. Uh, I think I thought it would outgrow the system very quickly. The funny thing is the lettuces <laughs> kind of outgrew them. Those root systems got wild, how big these plants were getting. But essentially I had problems. Um, I had to throw away so many of these. So you can see I have some of these net cups still in here because I was able to get the plants out of them. But the rest that you see that are empty, most of those, I had to throw away the net cups. The root system got so big, they actually broke the net cups. It was incredible. So that's something I'll have to think about for next season. Either don't let my plants go for so long or maybe a bigger net cup. I don't know. But I will definitely be growing fewer plants in this because it is such a productive system. So NFT for short season plants like lettuce and that sort of thing, it is fantastic. It grew so, so quickly and it was really easy to use. I never really had any problems. Uh, there's no air bubblers in here. There's nothing like that that I have to worry about. It literally is just water pumping from the reservoir up to the top here and then channeling down. I didn't do anything too special in terms of working out what the ideal drop is. Um, so, you know, that's the flow of the water. It affects the flow of the water. Yeah, it just, it just worked really well. So NFT, absolutely brilliant for leafy greens. I don't think there's too many competitors out there for what I was able to do with this. Next, let's talk about DWC or deep water culture. Now, this topic is going to be a little bit tough to talk about uh, because I know a lot of you are big fans of the system. And the thing is, it works incredibly well. It is a very effective way of growing. The problem is the maintenance of it has been a bit of a pain. Now, there are some things I can do to change this. Uh, there are two core things that, that cause problems. One, it's probably an easier fix than the other. The one is the air stones they kept coming off the end of the pipes now in this area here i have one two three four five so i have 10 dwc plants sitting over here and i would have to fix the air stone onto the pipe probably uh, probably once every other day at least with at least one of these now the good news is I could tell which ones the air pipe had come off because you'd see water all over the floor. The, when, when the air stone isn't on there, it's not dissipating the oxygen very well. So you have lots of big bubbles happening and it just splashes water everywhere. So you'd end up losing a lot of the water. Now, like I said, there's probably an easy fix for this, a uh, more secure method. I tried zip ties. I tried um, some clamps and a bunch of other things, but yeah, nothing really worked for me inevitably, and I'm sure there's probably one or two in here at the moment that have popped off. Problem number two is keeping these things topped up. I have 10 pots in here. Again, beginning of the season, it's fairly easy to keep these things topped up. I can quickly get in here and have a look. Um, and right now, actually, because the plants are looking a little bit worse for wear, it's not as, um, it's not filling the space as much as they were 
at the peak of the season. When they are filling up the space, I probably pack them in too close. Uh, getting to fill up these buckets and put new nutrients in and make sure everything's all topped up, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. I did try a couple of methods and we can take a look at what I've actually ended up doing. The first thing I did was I put in, and I showed a video on this, I put in some float valves. The problem is those float valves, which are pretty inexpensive, were pretty rubbish as well. Those float valves basically connected to a master bucket that was pushing water down into it. Um, they clogged up very easily because they have very small outlets. So yeah, I could get bigger float valves, but that gets expensive when you start getting bigger float valves. I've got 10 plants here. I've got, I think, 12 in Big Chump in the large greenhouse. And that means there's quite a few of these float valves to do. So I changed what I was going to do. What I did is I ended up just connecting them all via hose. So they're all interconnected. And then I have a bucket that's there that there's a float valve in the bucket. Scrap the float valve in the bucket. That just overcomplicated things. All I'm doing now is topping up the bucket. The bucket is 25 liters, so maybe I can go a bit bigger, but with a 25 liter bucket, each of these containers for DWC are about, I think they're 16 liters. So if it's completely empty, which happened quite a lot, I'd be having to fill up the, the main master bucket to spread to all the others. I'd have to do that multiple times. Um, with 10 plants, I'd have to probably do it about seven times. When you have them all connected with a hose pipe, the hose that's right at the front nearest to where the reservoir is that I was using to top up, that one would overflow pretty quickly. Didn't really work the way I imagined. Easy fix for that though, I put a little tap on the end. So I release the water more slowly rather than just pushing out the full 13 mil or half inch of hose pipe that I was using. I used a little tap to limit how much water or nutrients were flowing through. That was much better. So basically it all kept them all at the same level and it worked fine. But then you're back to the point of waiting for seven buckets or seven times filling up 25 liters into these buckets to be able to spread to these others. I mean, it's a long old process. So yeah, it might sound like I'm just being lazy. I'm sure there are better methods. I think recirculating DWC or RDWC that would probably be a better method. I was instantly starting to think about doing that when I started having these issues with keeping things topped up. Uh, but then I just thought to myself, that's quite similar to doing ebb and flood, um, the way I do ebb and flood, which we'll talk about next. So yeah, I'll have a think about this in the off season and maybe do something like that for next season. If you guys are interested in me doing another series of doing the uh, Hydro Wars, comparing various methods. Let me know in the comments below and I will do this again. Regardless, I will be playing around with hydroponics anyway. If it's for my own purposes, then fine. If you guys wanna come along for the journey, let me know down below. But DWC works incredibly effectively. I just don't like all the extra moving parts. Having to have that air pump, if an air pump fails and you've got some problems, believe me, when, when that air pump does fail, and it has, I've had to replace one air pump, the plants tell you about it very quickly. So thankfully for that, I was able to get a new air pump and sort that out. But when there's no air stone in there, not oxygenating the nutrients, this plant probably takes about four or five hours before it's going to be running out of any oxygen that's inside that liquid. And the plant is just not going to be happy. And if you leave it for too long, the roots may properly die off or just go rotten. You're not going to recover them. And yeah, then you've got a dead plant. So problematic. So let's talk about third and final system, my ebb and flood. I'll give you a bit of a spoiler. This is my favorite system. It has been for a very long time. And this year doing this process has just proven it. Sorry, I'm over here behind the plant. Uh, this is one of my ebb and flood plants. Just to remind you, I am six foot four. This plant is way above me. Yes, it's inside a barrel, so it's probably about that high off the ground, but still, it's an absolute monster. We have two of them. This one here is a pepper dew. So this is literally just two plants. Now, why do I love ebb and flood? Number one, the results. They're just incredible. And number two, the maintenance of the system is just so, so easy. Uh, it really is a dream if you're a busy guy uh, or if you're a really lazy guy and you just want a system that's going to work. Failures are mitigated quite easily. 
and uh, maintaining it and keeping things topped up. Again, super, super easy. This plant up here is my pepper dew, which is from the capsicum baccatum family or species of chilies. And the plant that's behind it is a warthog, which is part of the capsicum chinen species of chilies. So no matter what species you're growing, it's going to do fantastically in here. Some are obviously more predisposed to growing massive. That's more down to the variety than the species, but you can pretty much grow any type of plant in here. But for me, chili plants, um, they just do fantastically. When I say that mitigation of issues with ebb and flood is a lot easier than with other hydroponic systems, what I mean is with a DWC system, your roots are constantly inside liquid, right? Whether it's nutrients, water, whatever you're doing, it's constantly inside liquid. If the air pumps fail, because that's the only way that oxygen is getting in there, but if air pumps fail, those root systems are going to start drowning after about four or five hours, because that's about how long it takes for those root systems, especially once they're fully developed. Uh, that's how long it takes for it to get all the air out of the water, all the oxygen that it needs. So if the air pump fails after about four or five hours, it's depleted the oxygen. Now your plants are going to start drowning. Give it another five, six hours. So let's say half a day and your plant is going to be in some real trouble. After a full day, after 24 hours, if you haven't had any oxygen being introduced into that uh, root system, your plant is probably going to lose the majority of that root system, uh, possibly even die. When it comes to ebb and flood, that's a little bit of a different story. If the pumps fail, if electricity goes out for 24 hours, these plants are not going to look very happy. They'll be droopy. The leaves will be just looking very, very miserable. But as soon as I get the pumps up and working again, once the electricity is back on and I run one or two cycles through it, these plants will come straight back. They'll be almost back to normal without any significant issues. The reason for that is the way that ebb and flood works is it's flooding the system and you're using a substrate like well, what I'm using is uh, hydrogen, which are little clay balls. It's flooding that system. The hydrogen maintains some air inside it. It's very porous, but it also absorbs a little bit of the nutrients, the liquid that's there. Once the system ebbs or drains away, it's going to pull oxygen down into the substrate, plus those little clay balls obviously have oxygen as well. So it's going to pull fresh air down into the root system, but the roots are going to maintain a little bit of moisture. Now let's say that the pumps fail and it doesn't flood the system again for 24 hours. Those root systems are going to use up all the moisture that's in there. They're going to get dry, but they're not going to drown. So those roots will get very, very dry. Listen. If it takes like two or three days for you to sort this out, yes, that root system is not going to be happy and you might lose a lot of it, uh, possibly even kill the plant. But hopefully you're going to be checking in on your plants uh, more often than uh, once a day. But when you do cycle it back again, that the roots will just drink up that liquid. It'll drink up the, um, the nutrients and also, more importantly, going to get uh, water and oxygen back to the root system and your plant will just get back to normal again. Now, there is one caveat to that. If your electricity fails or your pumps fail during a flood cycle, then you're going to have problems. And that's why there does exist uh, certain ebb and flood systems that work via draining using gravity. So using a bell siphon, things like that. I don't do it that way. I have done it in the past. I've got some videos showing a bell siphon working. Well, a similar sort of system to a bell siphon. And that is probably far safer and you'll have less chance of this happening. So yeah, from a risk perspective, I think the least risky system here is the uh, ebb and flood system. Let's take a look at my larger ebb and flood system. This works on the same principle as the ebb and flood system that I just showed you, the one that I built myself. This one here is um, it's one you can buy off the shelf or you could buy off the shelf a little while back. I have modified it slightly and I will be modifying it again for next season just to make the spacing a little bit better. But essentially, we've got one massive reservoir over here. And uh, that there is keeping all these plants alive. We have about 40 plants in here. And this here is a thousand liter tank. Now, I probably could have done with an even bigger tank than this, surprisingly. But uh, it's, doing a, it's doing a fantastic job. The plants in here are super healthy. And again, it's using the exact same system. It's flooding the substrate and then draining it out on a timer and flooding back into the reservoir pretty straightforward. So I don't think it's too much of a surprise that ebb and flood has won, in my opinion, this year. 
Uh, it's still my absolute favorite way of growing hydroponically. Uh, it just ticks so many boxes for me from the ease of use, um, the ability to handle problems very easily, and the results. I mean, just take a look at these beautiful plants. And of course, my monsters that are inside there. Now, the system that I have inside my large greenhouse, I will be expanding that next year. We'll be putting in a few more tubs, exactly the same as I have there for my monsters there. So expect to see a, quite a few more massive, massive plants down that way. Uh, and then, of course, we will be redesigning this here so I can get to things a little bit easier and maybe even add a few more plants. We'll see. I need to still figure out the layout. So yeah, ebon flood for chili plants, absolutely amazing. But special mention here to NFT, that exceeded my expectations. It was such an easy system to use and for the right plants, uh, even my urban flood system, I don't think will be able to come close to what I was able to achieve there. And just so easy to get things in, get things out, um, have things ready, and also just how quickly it was able to grow and uh, get mature. So yeah, NFT, special mention, uh, definitely something I'm gonna be using going forward. DWC, on the other hand, I will have to make some significant modifications to continue using it next year. It was, it was more frustrating than anything this year. So even though I got some really good results and it does grow some fantastic plants, um, I think for, especially for what I'm doing, where I'm growing a lot of plants, I'm doing this commercially, uh, it just doesn't really do the job for me. So please do let me know in the comments down below if you'd like me to do this series again next year. And at the same time, let me know what systems you want me to compare. I'm gonna be running my ebon flood systems regardless. Uh, we can include that in the comparison or not, it's up to you, but uh, let me know which systems you'd like me to test. Uh, a few ideas, aquaponics. Oh, I really would love to try aquaponics um, and I'll definitely be doing that maybe next year. We'll see what you guys say down below. Uh, aeroponics, it'd be interesting to see how I do with full-size plants, but I think I might come up with the same sort of issues that I had with DWC, just the ongoing maintenance of it. But I think that's a good option. It'll be interesting to see what the, the output of that would be. But any other um, sort of hydroponic systems that you think I should give a go, uh, let me know down below in the comments. And if you got this far in the video and you're not subscribed, please subscribe and uh, make sure you click that bell icon to get alerted for my future videos. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, stay spicy.